they had just phoned the others to signal the start of the coordinated attacks. The target of the fifth bomber, Manfo Asiedu, was White City Underground Station. But on his way, he deactivated the bomb and later left it in the park. Between 12.25 and 5 past 1, the other four bombers tried to commit murder on a massive scale. So why didn't the bombs go off? Well, when police found the bottles of hydrogen peroxide at Curtis House, 36 of them had handwritten markings of 70 or 70% 70 on them. That was the concentration the terrorists were aiming for. Independent scientists recreated several bombs using this recipe. The mixture exploded every time. You watch something like that and you see the damage that, that could be done. You start to visualize what that sort of explosion could have done in an enclosed space like a tube carriage. The bombers had made a mistake in their calculations. A simple error had saved scores of lives. But the defendants maintained it was deliberate. And they tried to say that was done by design. They deliberately made it at a concentration that wouldn't explode. However, our experts said that wasn't possible. They would never have known that the mixture wouldn't explode and that it was safe. The prosecution asked if it was just a stunt, then why was a suicide note found? Why was there a headscarf and banner commonly used in suicide videos? Why had they included screws, bolts and metal washers in the explosives? And if it was a publicity stunt, why had they fled so silently? It fell apart. I can't imagine that any of the jurors were impressed. Not when they could see the evidence that had been found, not when they could see the detailed, detailed accounts of the preparations for these, for these bombings. The jury convicted the four main bombers. The judge sentenced them to life, recommending they serve at least 40 years each. Manfo Asiedu eventually pleaded guilty to conspiracy to cause explosions. He was sentenced to 33 years. I remember a sense of satisfaction. The events of, of, of that time, the eight days of that investigation, uh, I think will remain with all of us who were involved forever. And to get the result um, was something I think we felt we deserved. But there was another subplot to this extraordinary story. The family and friends who helped the bombers prepare their plot and to escape. It was obvious at the outset that they must have had help because they avoided arrest for almost a week. But it was only when uh, they were all arrested that we realised how wide and how successful that network had been. Hussein Osman was given shelter and a passport to flee Italy. Yassin Omar fled London in a burqa given to him by his fiancée. Others tried to hide evidence. In all, 11 people were jailed for assisting the bombers. I hope that it would send the message that if you are willing to either assist those that have tried to perpetrate the crime of that magnitude and that enormity, or if you try to help them escape afterwards, you will be called to account. Uh, the investigation will include you uh, and we'll bring you to justice. In May 2009, all legal proceedings came to an end. In all, 16 people were imprisoned for a total of 270 years. But for some who were involved in this story, there is little sense of triumph or success. I just feel that even though nobody died, it, it's the intention and, and they got away lightly with it. We all boil down to, to 40 years divided by the number of potential victims, you know, so my life is one year to him, 
you know? So... And the friends and family of Jean Charles de Menezes can never forget what happened to their loved one in those eight days. It was not without its traumas, as everyone will know. It was a difficult time for everybody that was involved. It's difficult to kind of bottle that sense of what the atmosphere in London was like at the time. And it's something that we still remember very clearly. And we try and remember the lessons that we've drawn from it very clearly as well. <laughs> 